Greetings, everybody. It's me, your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete, and this is my series, Nails in a Coffin, where we learned that with great kills, there must also come great nails. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, you can read what Nails in a Coffin is all about in the section down below, because these videos really aren't film reviews, rather a breakdown of the kills and evaluate how well the victim responded to their attack, and I use Nails in a Coffin like a star rating system. So this week, I am bringing you my Golden Nail Awards for the original Romero Dead trilogy. Not a Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Data Dead. And this is where I give you my favorite kills throughout all three movies. Because I'll give you my favorite three nail, two nail, and one um, nail rating that I gave to a kill. And I give them their Golden Nail Award. I only have three movies to cover, so this version of my Golden Nail Awards will be much shorter than the rest. It also is not going to take any time to rank these movies, and I know there are more films in the Romero Dead franchise. I just wanted to cover the original three, since I really just don't care for those other ones. So, we're going to start by briefly going over all three films' average nails in the coffin. You can see the averages for all three films here. Night of Living Dead, highest average of 1.71 nails. Dawn of the Dead, lowest average of 1.5, and Day of the Dead right in the middle with an average of 1.67 nails in a coffin. Now, Night of the Living Dead had the fewest number of kills, and that did have the highest average, but I did give out two nail ratings of three nails or more. Johnny getting three nails in a coffin, which I gave him for trying to stop the ghoul from attacking Barbara, and Ben, I awarded him three and a half nails in a coffin because he's Ben. You've seen the movie. You know, he was awesome during the entire film. He had a commanding role, you know, and he's my favorite character in the entire franchise. He was calm, cool, and collected, and a natural leader. And he was only killed when the redneck mistook him for a ghoul. Dawn of the Dead had the greatest number of kills with the lowest average, coming in with 1.5 nails. And you can see here there was a good mix of stupid decisions and actions, getting one nail in the coffin, and people who were in the wrong place at the wrong time, which I gave to two nails in a coffin. A few standouts in this film for me, and I'll get to those kills later. And finally, we have Day to Dead, somewhere in between the other two. And in this film, I only gave out one, one nail in the coffin rating. The rest were actually one and a half nails or higher, which I do believe brought that average up just a little bit. Also with this one, there was a good balance of kills that were because somebody made a stupid decision and kills where the person who died was just a victim of circumstance, like Dr. Fisher, so to speak. Okay, let's rank these films really quick. There's only three. It's not going to take long. Coming in at number three, Day to Dead. Of course, I do love this movie, but it's my number three when I compare it to the other films. You know, maybe it's in part because of the claustrophobia, I feel, when watching this movie. You know, and I imagine that was intended since, you know, they're trapped in a bunker almost the entire film. I also thought the characters were too black and white. And what I mean by that is, at the start of the film, you already knew who the quote-unquote bad guys are and who the good guys were. You had Dr. Logan and the military guys, both evil but in different ways. And then the other civilians, I think the both sides were just a little bit too cut and dry. But I do feel like watching this for the first time, it is kind of predictable, more so than the other two. Especially when you want to predict how well the movie ended. Still a fantastic film. Coming in at number two, Dawn of the Dead. Again, I love this movie. It's fantastic. But I do believe it drags a bit in the middle. There's a lot of time with just Peter, Roger, Francine, and Steve in the mall. doesn't really get exciting until the biker gang shows up. And then that part over is rather quickly. There's also a big tonal shift um, that always just felt odd to me. Starter movie hits really fast with the apartment building takeover with the SWAT team and the other guys living in the apartment. Then it slows way down once it gets to the mall and starts back up again. But once it does, there's less than 30 minutes left out of a two and a half hour long movie. The Biker Gang segment only lasts for about 15 to 20 minutes of that. But don't get me wrong, this is a wonderful movie. Easily in the top 10 greatest zombie movies ever. Maybe even top 5. But it's number 2 when I'm comparing it to the other films in the original Dead trilogy. Of course, that leaves us with the original. Coming in at number 1, released 56 years ago. Night of Living Dead. I remember watching this movie for the first time, and I just fell in love with it. It's low budget, shot in black and white, excellent performances. Without this movie, we may not have had the zombie genre that we have today. It may have been more rooted in the voodoo aspects of the lore instead of undead craving human flesh. You know, because they were just reanimated. This film has a charm to it, and I just really adore it. I wish I could have seen it back in 1968, but I wasn't born yet. Um, what an experience that would have been to see this movie in the theater, going in blind, just knowing the title. Man, that would probably would have been really cool to experience. But this will always be one of the best and most important zombie films in film history. 
And most importantly, without this film, we wouldn't have had the best zombie movie ever, Return of the Living Dead. Wrapping things up with my Golden Nail Awards, where I'm awarding a golden set of nails to my favorite one nail, two nail, and three nail kill in this series. I didn't award the very elusive four nails in the coffin rating, so no golden full nail award. However, I did award one half nail rating and even one zero nails in a coffin rating, which means they are going to compete for the golden goose egg award for special achievement in dumbassery. We're going to start with the Golden 3 Nail Award, and this was an easy pick, Ben, from Night of the Living Dead. He was the keystone of this film. Confident, strong, smart, decisive, tough, brave. Everything you want in a hero. Loved how he shot Harry after having enough of his bigoted stuff. Um, he made a lot of smart decisions, wanted to clear the house when he got in there, trying to board up the house as well. It just sucked how he got killed at the end of the movie, being mistaken for a ghoul. But he was the only one to survive the night. Easy decision right here. Ben receives the very, very prestigious, I should say. I don't know. Um, golden three and a half nail award. The golden two nail award goes to Blades from Dawn of the Dead. Played by Tom Savini, a special effects legend. His death is one of the standouts in this trilogy for me. I mean, he was in the middle of fighting off the undead while next to a railing on the second floor of the mall. He had like kind of one in the headlock. He was shooting others when Peter shot him. But he had that cool swan dive um, over the railing to the fountain down below. He also had one of the coolest kills in the entire franchise with that slam machete into the zombie's head. And I think if you mention Dawn of the Dead, you know, to someone, one of the first characters they're going to think about is Blades because of Tom Savini. It's just a very iconic character. And yeah, so I think he's deserving of the Golden 2 Nail Award because that's the one that stood out to me. The Golden 1 Nail Award is going to... Dr. Logan from Day of the Dead. He was such a despicable character. No morals or ethics at all. Only doing what he wanted for his own selfish gain. With Captain Rhodes, we knew he was an evil asshole from the start. With Dr. Logan, you kind of expect him to have at least some scruples. But no, I think he was more of a villain since he was under the guise of being a doctor performing research to find a cure to whatever was reanimating the dead. But he was just filling his own morbid curiosity. And that's why his death was one of the most satisfying deaths in this franchise to, to me. So, that earns him the Golden One Nail Award. Wrapping up these awards with the Golden Goose Egg Award for Special Achievement and Stupidity. This goes to somebody who made one of the most bonehead decisions I've ever seen in a horror movie. Pedro, the blood pressure guy in Dawn of the Dead. He already checked his blood pressure when the biker gang first stormed the mall. But for reasons unknown to everyone... He chose to sit in the machine again and check it while he was surrounded by zombies. It was one of the craziest, dumbest things I have ever seen in a horror movie. And you can't help but chuckle at it. He was more than stupid as stupid can be. So he's more than deserving of the Golden Goose Egg Award. You're stupid! I'm stupid! I'm stupid! Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Rather short episode of my Golden Yellow Awards. But there were only three movies in this lot that I covered. And as of recording this, I'm not sure what I'm going to cover next. But I'll see you in two weeks for another episode of Nails in a Coffin. So I appreciate you watching. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. All that usual stuff helps me grow this channel. I greatly appreciate it. Great. So until I see you again, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be good to yourselves and be good to each other. I am your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete. Remember, with great kills, they must also come. Great nails. <laughs>